What's going on, everyone? Happy Tuesday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Tuesday edition of the Pandemic Update for Tuesday, April 30th, 2024. If you're new to my channel, this is where we do the daily pandemic update on all things COVID and any other virus that could be a health threat to you. Lately, we've been talking about H5N1 quite a lot. We'll be talking about that and, of course, COVID as well. We're going to take a look at some wastewater. Walgreens, we're actually going to dive into some states today. We'll take a look at New Jersey, some of our other daily stuff, and some alarming uh, numbers that have come out of Philadelphia from yesterday. Yes, a really high number of EMS calls. I'll explain about that in today's update. If you're new, subscribe down below. Like what you see here? Give it a thumbs up. Want to share this with anyone else to help keep other people safe? Share this with anyone you know. Leave a comment down below. Remember, the more likes we get on this, the more shares, the more YouTube shares this throughout the algorithm. Let's try for over 100 likes today. Alrighty, starting off today. In Thailand, yes, we haven't talked about Thailand in a while, but there's some bad news coming out of uh, Thailand. They are seeing an alarming rise in the number of COVID-19 admissions and COVID-19 deaths. Bangkok, this is coming from now. Their figures from the past week from April 21st to April 27th showed that 1,672 COVID patients were admitted to the hospitals and nine died. 390 of the patients suffered from severe lung infections and 148 others had to be put on a ventilator. Yikes, that's uh, rather concerning. This far out, this is stuff we were hearing a few years back. It's happening. Read this. The doctor that was talking about this noted that the rate of hospital admissions rose 66.5% from the previous week. He said admission rates had been rising for seven consecutive weeks. So this is definitely something we have to keep an eye on. What is going on in Thailand? I'm not seeing here. Hang on. I'm not seeing here what variant this is about. However, nonetheless, it is very concerning. Hopefully we can find out what variant there is. Is it the KP variant? I don't know what variant they're dealing with right now. If you know what variant is circulating in Thailand right now, let me know down below. I have not seen anybody speak about that on social media. All right, U.S. testing beef products for H5N1 bird flu. All right, this is starting to get a little concerning. Uh, now we're starting to test. First, they say it's safe to eat the beef products. Now they're saying they're testing it. You know, it brings back memories. I was thinking about this last night. It really reminds me of 2020 when we first said, oh, COVID, is, it's airborne. Oh, wait, COVID's not airborne. You don't need masks. Oh, wait, COVID is airborne. I mean... Starting to feel the vibes. So far, they're saying it's safe, but now they're testing it. We'll see what happens. Uh, a lot of people are going to be consuming beef pretty soon. Why am I saying that? Well, in the month of May, Memorial Day weekend comes. You know, cookouts, barbecues. So, uh, hopefully, we can get some answers here relatively quickly. I know a lot of people have told me, oh, no, they stopped consuming beef years ago, or they're going to stop consuming it now. You know, I'm personally watching this very closely. And uh, if it gets to the point where things seem very, you know, sketchy, where like, uh, are we not being told the correct thing? I will by all means stop eating beef relatively qu quickly. So uh, we'll have to see what happens. But again, they are now testing beef products in the United States for bird flu. And some countries, I read, I don't have it up here. I think I tweeted it yesterday. Some countries have already said, hey, we don't want any beef products from the United States. This is getting relatively serious, my friends. All right. Speaking of serious, this is just flat out ridiculous, especially now that we may have another illness potentially to deal with. Hospitals no longer required to report respiratory illness data as another COVID area mandate ends May 1st. Okay, so it would drop for COVID, but, you know, H5N1, let's just, God forbid it gets to humans. Well, that can be a respiratory illness, right? They wouldn't be required to report about that. And I don't think they would come back. Maybe they would put a new mandate saying hospitals have to report H5N1 case. I don't know. 
I mean, I'm just speculating about that, but more importantly, we'll have to see what this means for the states that still do report. There's still some states we talk about each week. We don't talk about all of them. I'm pretty sure there's more that have dashboards. I never get around to look up those dashboards, but it's not going to matter. May not be around soon. If they're not required to report, will we still get New Jersey? What about New York? What about uh, California's weekly update? You know, quite a few states, so this is not good. This is going to be starting tomorrow, May 1st. All right, taking a look at today's pollen levels. The pollen levels show 38% of the country is in the medium to high status. The Midwest through the Central Plains, you're in the red. Here where I'm at, we're in the red, back down through Baltimore, D.C., Richmond, Virginia, uh, Boston, you're in the orange too near red. Northern Maine, you're in the red today as well. The West Coast, oranges in California, even some yellows and some greens across western portions of Oregon and along Washington's Pacific Coast. All right, moving on to air qualities today. And I do have to refresh this because it's already going gray on me. Doesn't last that long when you refresh it. It goes gray within about five minutes. Taking a look here. Across the mid-Atlantic region, from Washington up to New York, we're seeing a lot of yellows and some oranges in Pennsylvania. Haven't heard anything about wildfires in Pennsylvania, but, you know, there could be a few going on. It's another warm day. There's a little bit of wind. Uh, the humidity is, it was up yesterday. It's not up too high. I'm just looking at my station here. 58% ah, humid. Maybe there is some wildfires, but not even at that, you know, you have a lot of pollen in the air. You have a warm air mass. It's creating bad air qualities. And when you have bad air qualities and warmer air mass, it leads to something. It leads to a higher number of respiratory calls. Explanation about that in just a moment. Dallas, Texas, back through the plains, some minor air quality issues, especially in Texas, and the usual spots out on the west coast. All right. About those um, potential respiratory issues, I think there were quite a few yesterday here in Philadelphia. 945 EMS incidents yesterday. Now, we had our first 90-degree day. I actually hit 91 degrees here yesterday. And you have to remember something. We're coming off of the second biggest wave of the entire pandemic. So that means a heck of a lot of people had COVID back during the winter months, back during the winter holidays, and to end 2023. Several of those people, we'll say hundreds of thousands, if not millions of new people across the United States now have new long COVID issues. Well, thousands of them likely have breathing issues. I think that showed its true colors yesterday. 945 EMS incidents, first hot day, poor air quality. Um, when you're having breathing problems, you know, when your lungs are damaged because of a COVID infection, the first hot day hit you a heck of a lot harder. And there were 945 EMS incidents yesterday. I can't go through and see, well, I could. I could sit here for hours and go back and listen to the call volumes and hear what the different calls were and then make a chart. You get the idea. But the point is, first hot day, most calls in one day from what I have seen since last summer. 945 EMS incidents in Philadelphia. What's going on in the suburbs of Philadelphia today? Well, take a look at this. There are currently 13 calls right now. Montgomery County, not seeing any respiratory calls. Cardiac emergencies in there, unconscious subject, and a whole bunch of other things. Ooh, water rescue going on in Upper Marion Township. That's never a good thing, and it's sunny here today. Uh, Chester County, respiratory difficulty, abdominal pain, allergic reaction, fall, injured person. Heart problems, falls, falls. So, yeah, and hey, heart-related problems, that could have been an issue yesterday, too, causing breathing issues. May have been some dehydration mixed in there. Although in the burbs, I haven't seen much in the way of dehydration calls. I think I saw one yesterday. So, burbs meaning suburbs of Philadelphia. All right, moving on. Walgreens. The positivity rate nationally this week for COVID is 12.6%. The prior week was 13%. Difference of down 0.4%. Total tests, 3,941. The prior week was 4,488. And once again, repeating from yesterday, Walgreens is at the lowest level since April 17th of 2022. Mind you, and I should have mentioned this yesterday, there's a ton of states. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 
13, 14, at least 14 states, maybe more, that are not reporting. So add that into the mix as well. The positivity rate could have potentially been a little bit higher. Let's take a look at five states, just five, because we do want to take a look at wastewater as well. I'm seeing green in Maine. That's a good thing. What's going on there? The positivity rate in Maine is 12.5%. That's down 21.4%. Difference of down 8.9%. So 21.4%, that's down 8.9%, 12.5% last week. Total tests, 8 out of 14, but I'm seeing bright red in New Jersey. What could that mean? 16.1% positivity rate this week. That is up from last week's 13.1%. That's up by 3%. 124 tests versus 137. Then we come out here to New Mexico. And, uh, well, this is not good, but there's an explanation for why it's not good. 13.2% this week. 8.8% the prior week. Difference of up 4.3%. More testing than last week. 38 versus 34. That's not good, but take a look here. Gotta zoom in and look at the pattern. They do a lot of up, down, up, down. The overall trend is downward. So while they go up, down, week to week, it is gradually headed downward. Let's do another state. This is state number three. This one is in the green. Washington, 5.1% positivity rate this week 20.3 percent last week that is down by 15.2 percent with testing down as well this is easily a legitimate drop 59 versus 64 testing take a look at that chart way down over the previous week and now let's take a look at just one more state how about we come out here to wisconsin what's going on there well, Wisconsin is 16.7% this week. Prior week was 12.5%. That's a difference of up 4.2%. Total test, 84 versus 96. It's up. Testing's down. So but part of the reason could be testing being down. We'll take a look at more states again tomorrow. Biobot this week. All regions are dropping at this time. All right, let's take a look at wastewater scan, and we want to do some sites in the south. First off, let's take a look at the south region as a whole on the charts. COVID is dropping. Respiratory you know, RSV is dropping. Influenza A did have a rise back in the beginning of April, then it started dropping. Influenza B is dropping. HMPV was dropping. Most recent update may be going up a little bit. Norovirus, yeah, it's still higher this time. It's still at or above 50,000. And when we come down here, we cannot take a look at hepatitis or MPOX. All right, now taking a look at a few individual wastewater sites. And let's go to the Birmingham, Alabama area and see what's going on there. We'll just go right here to the center of town. Population 200,000 at this wastewater facility. The COVID trend. It's flat at this time. It's low. RSV is low. Influenza A, eh, it rose a little bit, but now it's trying to level off influenza B. No issues. HMPV still listed as high. And norovirus looks like it may be trying to rise once again. Still high. No MPOX issues. And just a couple detections of hepatitis A. Moving on now to Georgia. Let's see what's going on at two sites in Georgia. Columbus, Georgia. We are seeing that uh, wastewater at this time for COVID is dropping. RSV is flat at this time. Influenza A had gone up a little bit in April and HMPV is rising. Norovirus, eh, I would say it's medium to high at this time, but it is kind of leveled off. No MPOX detections and hepatitis A, just a few detections of that. Now moving over to Atlanta area and let's go to the Clayton wastewater site and see what's going on there. Low for COVID and low for RSV, low for influenza A, which did rise a little bit. Influenza B is low, HMPV, no issues, no MPOX, and take a look at this. Hepatitis A, just a few detections of that. Now we'll do one more site down in Florida before we move on. And in Florida, we want to take a look at what is going on down in Miami. And let's see here. Drum roll, please. Miami, COVID is dropping. RSV is low at this time. Influenza A is flat at this time. Influenza B is flat. Norovirus, uh, I would still say that is moderate to high. I mean, you're still over, uh, yeah, over 40,000 pathogens at this time. No MPOX issues and hepatitis A at this time. There are a few detections. All right, we will do some more wastewater sites tomorrow from another region in the United States. Hey, if anyone knows of wastewater sites or wastewater data for other countries, and I think I'm going to make a tweet about this this evening, any site that has wastewater data from other countries, 
Let me know down below, and I will tweet about this on Twitter. You'll be able to share links on Twitter. I want to include that in these updates if we can. On, you know, days where news is slower. Okay, we don't need to take a look at hospital capacity data for today. Uh, nothing to report on this day in COVID history. And we do want to take a look at the latest variants. KP.2 is 24.9%. Of the variants JN.1 is 22%. And JN.1.7 is at 13.7%. Hospital admissions. Let's pull that up here. Hospital admissions in the past week. They were down 14.4%. 5,615 people were admitted. Taking a look at New Jersey. Drum roll, please. Hopefully, oh, look at that. 70 out of 70 hospitals in New Jersey reported. Haven't been able to say that in a while. And New Jersey has been going down ever so slightly. And now for most of April, just flattened out. They're not really dropping. They're not rising. It's just pretty much bouncing around. So we'll have to see how long this persists. Hopefully, maybe they could drop even further. New York State does continue to drop somewhat. You'll see. There's a little bump in the road today. Test did positive 299. Does not include these guys right here, the rapid test. And taking a look at what is going on with hospitalizations, you can see here. They ended last week 411 and 44 in the ICU. Today, it's 420 hospitalized with 42 people in the ICU. So, not terribly concerning. I think they'll continue down later this week, and I think they will get below 400 hospitalizations by the end of this week, which I think that's pretty good, considering at the peak of the winter wave, they were at 3,403. Alrighty, folks, that does it for the Tuesday edition of the Pandemic Update. When I see you again tomorrow, it will be a new month. It will be the month of May. We'll see what the month of May holds in store. Hopefully, some good news. Hopefully, you know, some good H5N1 news where it's not a big deal, but mm, we have to watch that one day by day. My concern level, like I said the other day, was between 4 and a 5. Right now, uh, I'm... I'm, I'm going to say close to a five. I mean, I'm right in the middle, pack in the middle. I don't want to go too high. Don't want to go too low. I'm just going to wait it out day by day. COVID, we're not seeing a new wave just yet. Uh, there's no signs of one just yet. There are signs that some states are not dropping anymore, but they're also not rising at this time. So that's some good news. Tomorrow, we'll take a look at another region for wastewater. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content, subscribe to my channel down below if you have something to say leave a comment share this with anyone you know and that's it until i see you again next time stay safe everyone have a fantastic tuesday evening and thanks for watching take care everyone bye bye